We're here at Carpenter's Music World. For this week's podcast, we're going to talk about violins and cellos, some of my favorites. My first introduction to Andante strings was down at the International Music Show in Anaheim, California. I met with the vice president of the company down there. They were so kind to me and we got some good ideas on how to promote our violin line. Here today with us is a young lady by the name of Laura Penrose. So she's not only a pretty redhead, but she knows an awfully lot about violins. Laura, what, tell me a little bit about your company. So Andante Strings has a really unique background in that we're able to modify a lot of our instruments to each customer and each store's needs. Uh, most violins and orchestra instruments in the industry nowadays are kind of cookie cutter instruments. They just come out of a box and are shipped as is, but all of our instruments are set up in our workshop in Cincinnati by hand to kind of fit each, each company's specific needs. And one of the things you did with us that no other manufacturer has ever done is you sent us a whole bevy of violins and cellos mm -hmm. and for us to be able to use and, and uh, show to our customers. Why did you do that? We did. So one thing we think is really important, especially for band and orchestra stores that maybe don't have a huge hold of the orchestra industry locally, we wanted to show our entire product line from everything from a really beginning entry, entry level instrument up to a really high level professional master crafted instrument to let all of your customers and local teachers have the full line experience. Now it's my understanding that these violins and cellos are manufactured in China. A lot of people have a, a rather tainted view about Chinese instruments and the quality of them. They order them on the internet and their violins are $125 to $150, uh, cellos are $150 to $250. What makes yours different? Right, there is quite the stigma with Asian made instruments being competitive against European crafted instruments. However, if you take away the idea that they're Chinese instruments and relabel them as Asian luthiers, it creates a much better picture. Um, there are poor quality instruments that come out of China. Um, we don't want to sell those or be affiliated with them, but all of our instruments are handmade by professional luthiers that most of them have been trained in Europe by those European masters, but because of the economic kind of industry in China, we're able to offer them at a lower price than you would get the same quality from a European company. You know, talk about the quality of violins. Let's take a look at the wood grain on this particular violin. Could you tell us just a little bit about uh, why this violin is unique? So all of our instruments are made from aged maple and spruce. Uh, you have a hard spruce top and sides with an aged maple back. We don't use woods that are aged less than five years. It's definitely not long enough to make an instrument out of. Any shorter than that, they're considered green. You have all kinds of problems. All of our woods are aged at least five years or higher. And on levels of this, with this master craftsmanship, typically it's between 10 and 15 years before they even take a knife to it to carve. Um, this one's a little unique. This is one of our bench copy bows. They are already designed and modeled after a specific violin from a previous violin craftsman. You know, one of my personal favorites happened to be this violin. Just look at the back and sides of this. It has special woods in it. Laura, can you tell me a little bit about what type of wood this is? Sure, so this is called a burled maple. Each pattern is extremely individual. They're not gonna look the same compared to any of the other ones. Um, we offer this in a violin and occasionally a viola, but it is hard to find pieces that are strong enough to make an instrument out of that still retain um, the beauty that you would want in an instrument. So we can pretty much say that there's nobody else on the block that's going to have a violin like this one. Exactly. The one thing that impressed me when I was down there too was the cases. Every fine violin needs to have a fine case that goes with it to protect it. Why do you think these are better cases than others that are out there? So this is our unique line of fiberglass cases. They are extremely durable. Uh, they're also available in violin, viola, and cello. They have multiple bow holds. Most professional or intermediate players use different bows for different purposes, so you do have room for two. You have room for your shoulder rest that hooks in here, and then a storage unit for rosin, polishing cloths, miscellaneous treats, whatever you prefer. Um, and then a really strong Velcro grasp here keeps your instrument from jostling around as you are using it. It also has a unique feature on the back that you can hook on backpack straps. That way it keeps your hands free. 
One thing I noticed about these two is that they had three hinges instead of two. Mm -hmm. And they're better quality hinges and they're covered so they don't scratch the violin. Exactly. Bows are an important part of violin playing also. There are some bow that cost, bows that cost thousands of dollars. Tell me why these bows that don't cost anywhere near that much may fill some of the quali same qualifications. Sure, so bows definitely are an important part of playing a string instrument. Um, I kind of relate it to tires on a car. Even if you have a really excellent car, if you don't have the right tires, it's not gonna perform as well as it could. So with our bows, we start with a graphite bow. A lot of companies do a fiberglass bow, but we found the graphite bows are a little bit lighter and easier to play with. So we start with a graphite bow that's gonna be light and durable, especially for beginners. If they're dropping it all the time, it's not gonna break. Um, you're gonna get a really easy pull and play with these. But as we get up in quality, we'll see things like carbon fiber or wood. Um, they're all gonna change the way the instrument sounds and the way that you can play and respond on it. Um, wood bows especially can really get expensive really quickly based on where the wood came from, how the wood has been cambered, where the balance point is, who made them, how the frog is shaped. There's so many, so many details that go into bow making. It, it really is a unique decision to each personal player. So we have a whole line of really unique cello products starting from, again, entry level beginning instruments for those people who really just wanna take that first step all the way up to master crafted instrument like you have with you right there. Uh, cellos are really unique in that they don't come in a single shape. Violins tend to be a little bit more standardized where cellos have a lot more unique body styles. Uh, you'll see this one, for example, has what's called a Magini decorative pattern. So it has the double purfling, which are the black lines around here, and the decorations on the back. The front just has the double purfling, but you can also see the quality of the wood is extremely high. You can tell by the tight grain in the wood, you can tell by the graduation on the insides. An instrument like this is really gonna do a player a lot of good, especially if they're kind of looking for that next step up from their beginning level instrument. And then when we move all the way up to here, I notice that this is a little bit more of a satin finish, satin sheen. Mm -hmm. What makes this so much better than that one even? So that one is unique in that it has an oil varnish on it, which is a higher quality of stain to the wood. It's gonna give the wood a harder feel to it as it's aging. So it's actually gonna help the sound come out better with stronger, more differentiated tones, better color. You're gonna have a lot more control over the sound that you're wanting out of an instrument like this. Laura, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate you coming over all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, to our store and to helping us out uh, to demonstrate the Adante line of violins and cellos. It's, uh, it's been great having you here, it's been fun. Uh, we hope you come back again really soon. We've talked about violins, cellos, so remember it's not violence, but violins at Carpenter's Music World. You can chill out with the cellos if you have trouble chilling out on your own. And we're going to have a grand piano sale August 16th through 19th. Don't want to miss that one. That's Carpenter's Music World, 1090 Kitsky Lane. The telephone number is 775 852-7618 or you can find us on the, on the web carpentersmusic.com